So we have a, a full comp here. And last week, I was working on preparing for the object class support for Crimson OSD. And basically, it's a, nothing but refactoring and remove the replacing the uh, capital mutex with the CIF comma mutex, which will will be disabled when we start is is an is defined and uh, because uh alfredo is uh is on gto so i didn't get much progress on on the on integrating uh performance test into ci so i will try to catch up with him and uh, and start starting working on the ci stuff and uh, that's me uh so uh, is the idea with the Yes. I was going to say, is the idea with the object classes then to use either alien or stack switching magic to run them, or? Mm, I don't think I will. I will try to run object class in, in alien. That's a, probably I will. Because the, the object class is a very thin wrapper, wrapper around the, the, the feature, feature offered by OSD and the PG, right? So yeah, I'd, but I'd they're, prefer... they're they're synchronous. Yeah, they block. Yeah, that's the yeah. part I'm worried about. So It'll I block up the I entire will... reactor we... thread. I agree. So I think my plan will rewrite all of them, at okay. least the, the, the subset of them which support RBD, with a uh, with the future and uh, define the the fun function type with with their counterpart of uh, a fun fun function function type. Returns a uh, future. Yeah, that's not that'll, that'll suffice. Okay. Yeah. The workload is uh, very small, I think. Pretty much yeah, translation. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um. I'm working on the alien uh, uh blue star. So just uh, provide the patch for the encapsulation uh uh, uh futurized object uh object star uh. So uh, now I'm working on the willing uh, alien star, and uh, I will skip next. Uh, maybe next uh, fall uh, weekly meeting, I will take a sabbatical. Okay. And I think your patch is pretty close. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm working on the alien star now. And, uh, what is alien star? Alien blue star, right? Alien blue star, yeah. Alien okay. blue star, yeah. Redek. Uh, I was working. Uh, I'm still. I was working, and I'm still working on uh, the concept of input uh, buffer uh, factory. Uh, last week, I went uh, through the implementation. Uh, I was refining requirement basically. I went through the documentation of both SPDK of both SPDKs BDEF and SPDKs NVMe drivers to figure out the real needs for uh, con for uh, contiguity and. First of all, it appears that BDEF is much, much more uh, higher level thing than NVMe driver of SDK. It allows you not only to consume NVMe, but also Linux AIO or even Ceph RBD as well. So I I bet we will later want to go with, uh, with uh, NVMe driver, which doesn't have a strong requirement on the scatter gutter list, there is a documentation for the callback used for iterating the segments. And the single requirement I can uh, find is that uh, it, it, needs, it needs physical contiguity across single segment of, uh, of the scatter gutter. Uh, if we're uh, taking a look on the implementation of memory management uh, in a DPDK, it seems uh, that uh, support 
arbitrary sizes of uh, segments will need to provide uh, SPDK allocator to uh, the PDK's uh, mempool infrastructure. So the glue code between sister and DPDK uh, still it, it it will be required likely for this for the for the big segments it may be that that small typical uh, segments are perfectly fine to go with what we have uh, right now uh, I can see the default size of M buff uh, in uh, DPTK is uh, half, exactly half of a page so if they, if they are aligned, the physical contiguity imposed by the uh, by the NVMe driver should be uh, should be fulfilled out, out, out of the box. Uh, I've sent a PR with uh, the input factory concept and extended uh, the document. Here is a link. Uh, also, I was taking a look on the I, I was trying to feature uh, to refine the IOU ring thing uh, that Ronan uh, has proposed uh, on last call. The idea is that uh, our implement our interface, the, our interface extension needs to be uh, needs to take into consideration the IOU ring uh, in the future. And it seems that uh, it won't be too different. Okay. Uh, IOU ring offers cutter gutter list, but uh, it's very, very close to what uh, we have already with uh, vectorized read with uh, readv. Uh, basically, Ready, that's. Uh, oh, please go on. Sorry. Uh, sorry, could you repeat, please? Please go on. I saw you you finished. Please go. On. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm just right now. I'm I'm focused on on testing a tiny implementation of the input buffer factory in Crimson OSD. That's all for my side. Really, I'm not sure how how the are you ring. Or is it related to, to to our to Crimson or or, or well, to the memory buffer alignment in specific? I understood that Ronan makes a bet that both ker the both kernel kernel network stack and kernel storage stack will handle them using IO Uring in the future, and I think it's a, it's a good assumption because uh, the portability won't be a big problem. Uh, Ronan has posted a tweet uh, from Yaniv saying that we'll basically uh, backport the, the future, but we can expect that uh, it will be backported soon. Being able to use IOU ring would be a, yes. a benefit. Um, not having to do user space networking and storage is a big win because people get I'm to be using... to be honest. Not entirely. Sorry. IOU ring no, it's a, it's, it's a usability be... ring. Uh, when, sorry. I mean, being being able to use efficiently kernel storage and networking is nice for people. So if we can do that with minimal overhead, that would be cool. So I totally uh, get yes. the idea of trying to make sure we don't shoot ourselves in the foot. If that makes sense. Sure. Sure. It's what it will, uh, the last thing what to emphasize is that uh, IOU ring will help with the syscall overhead, yeah, but exactly. still you will need to do memory copy it's in contrast okay. to dpdk uh it will you will require you will be required to do some mem copy for the sake of preserving isolation between users your user space application and kernel. in case of dpdk slash uh, spdk you are absolutely free of that and also there in case of iou ring it's very likely that you will uh, have a jump between uh, between uh, cpu cores so definitely, IOU ring will uh, will make the gap, the performance gap, uh, smaller, but it still will be there. But what you're basically doing is you're just trying to make sure. Well, you're just trying to find out whether we're choosing to do something incompatible with IOU ring, with the way we're specifying memory. Exposure. Yes. Okay. Yes, that we makes, need to, we need to, to keep. Yep, we need to keep the doors open for IOU ring as well. About makes sense. 
sorry, I buy it, it makes sense. Hey, go then. Uh, no code changes, just uh, going around reading code and uh, helping uh, Radek uh, with, uh, with questions and uh, discussion. Um, that's more or less what uh, did the uh, week. I will try now to read the uh, three PRs that uh, you mentioned in this talk and try to see if I have questions or misunderstandings about them. But I don't expect to to make code changes in the next one. That's the... Uh, That's on the Thanks, Ronan. And Dan? Okay, so I got the Whip Crimson peering thing merged last week. So the short answer, or Monday. So the short summary is you can now bring up more than one OSD. They will do the thing where they peer. They will even create like PGs and, pool, and a pool. If you create a pool after you bring it up. So there's, there's essentially no reason now to bring up a classic OSD and then kill it and bring up a, a Crimson OSD. You can just start however many Crimson OSDs you're trying to start. Notable things that it does not do. It does not actually replicate IO. So if you have replication set to three and you send a write, it only goes to the primary because the write path hasn't been updated yet. I would say that that's probably the next thing to do. Um, the other next things to do are log-based recovery and backfill, which means if you kill a Crimson OSD and bring it back up, if you actually did a write in that time, it's not going to be able to figure out what to do. Actually, it's not going to be able to figure out what to do anyway because the, its replicas aren't going to have the writes, so it's probably not going to work. Um, so those three things are the next steps. Um, all of the peering code is there. It's just that the IO path itself doesn't, for instance, send the messages to the other OSDs to like propagate the writes because if you go look at classic OSD, that stuff is outside of peering. It's a it's in the replicated backend and the EC backend because they have their own messages. Um, and similarly with log based recovery and backfill, that's not in peering. Peering simply tells them what to recover. There, there's a whole separate message exchange uh, system for actually implementing it. Um, not overly complicated, admittedly, but that's the next thing. Uh, I sent out a PR request for comment sort of deal. Um, you don't actually have to look at it, but I promised John May I'd send it out last week and then totally failed to. So I figured I'd send it out now. Uh, I was going to do the client IO part first, but when I, I I got like super frustrated with how I'd done the message handling for peering, if the handle PG create templated function was super hard to debug. So I replaced that with something I, I peering messages will also be ops that also can block and can be dumped from the OSD. So I just started there because whatever. The next thing to do is the client IO part. But if you are going to look at the patch, I think the parts that are worth looking at are every ongoing operation the OSD does that it's like thread-like, I guess you could say, like processing a peering message or processing an asynchronous peering event or processing a client request or processing an OSD to OSD replication message. I'm thinking of these as thread-like events. Any one of these things, when they sort of come into existence, get put onto a list that's typed so that they can be dumped from the OSD. And when they stop, it's expected that they will have a pointer to something that describes why they're stopped. Um, the only one I have set up so far is the waiting for map blocker. So if you're stuck waiting for map, there will be a pointer to a thing that, where if you dump the op, it'll say, I'm stuck, and it's because I'm waiting for OSD map 30. It's not big stuff, but it, it means that, like most of the peering message handling stuff got moved into a separate file that you can kind of look at at a, at a glance and see all of it in one little function. All of the actual code for it is elsewhere, but you can see the sequence of operations any one of these ops needs to go through. The stages. Which file is it? Like, um, OSD operations slash peering event dot whatever. It's not a huge patch. Um, a lot of this is going to change though, but I think the parts that I the, the parts that I actually like are the parts where every operation is on a list and has a pointer to the thing that's stopping it from making progress, I guess. Um, and I'm gonna do the same thing to client IO next. Uh, I'm also doing some work on Blue Store quality of service stuff, so it'll be a little slower, but yeah. So Sam, do you think 
uh, we can start working on the replica support, namely to, to send the, the, the right request to the replica OSD. Oh, absolutely. If anyone wants to pick that up, I'd be happy to talk to them about what can be ignored for now, for instance, and what I think is. Yes, important. I think it's, a, it's more important than, uh, than class object support, I think. Probably I can, I, I yeah. will. In the sense yeah. that it'll probably inform the way you designed that interface. So yeah. Yeah. So I I will I will very likely to to work on the replica support. Go for the next it. Step. Um, have a look at the way I did the OSD operations part because I, I I really do want like the way I I extracted the way the peering message works through the different ways it can be stopped. That's what I want to do with the client IO. It'll be kind of the same, right? So the first thing is to like take the two things it does now and extract that into the same form. If you give me a few days, I'll probably get to it. If not, you can talk to me and I'll help you through it. Either way. Um, or you can just start okay. at the bottom end and like, yeah, I mean, however you want to do it. If you take a look, you'll probably have a pretty good idea of what I'm doing and whether you like it or not. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to, so if I wanted to, to work, on, work on it right now, I should should read your PR 28395 first, right? Just have a brief look at it. You may not even like the sure. way it's doing it. In which case, that's okay. Fine. <laughs> I'll share with you what I saw, uh, what I think. Yep. Or um, you can do it the other one. We can convert it afterwards. It's not a big deal. Oh, yeah. Right. I see. And, uh, the relevant code in classic OSD is basically. So the 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 only sort of open question for me is to what extent we want to worry about erasure coded pools. Um. So if you look at classic OSD, there's this thing it does where when it's building up the operation that it sends to the, like, internally when it's translating the client operation into a sequence of internal operations for purposes of building snapsets and object infos and changing sizes and changing exists and stuff. It builds up this structure that's agnostic as to whether it's replicated or erasure coded. Oh, yes. So we could either do that or just not do that and try not to do anything silly. Um, uh... Because in a... You, you, that, 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 that I is think, make it, I think Redek also raised the same concern when. I think it's probably the, all we have to do like is that. like if 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 you look at the classic OSD code, there are some things it's careful not not to do. Um, as long as we don't um, uh, what is it? It's it tries not to do reads basically. Um, it's not nearly as important for Crimson because we actually can block because of futures, right? So our our reads already block. So that may be the only thing that really matters, in which case we just have to make sure that later we can swap out the structure we're building for something else. And that's not nearly as scary. That's just the only thing I would be worried about. Why are, is, if, just the back of why are we doing it? Why is it doing it? Why do we, ah, do okay, so to... with, so replicated PG and erasure coded backend, or replicated backend and erasure coded backend have a crucial difference, which is that with replicated backend, you're sending exactly the same transaction to all of the replicas right, byte for byte. So what it actually does is it builds up an object store colon colon transaction in memory, serializes it, copies it, and, send it, and sends it out three, uh, three times in three different messages. That's it, there's nothing else it has to do. But for the, for the EC backend, it has to actually send different messages to the different replicas because they get different bits. Then it needs to be erasure mm -hmm. coded. But more importantly, there are rules about when you can do reads and writes relative to what's in the cache on the primary. So the back end has to look at the transaction being sent and go, oh, I need to put the pipeline into read write mode. And I need to block until all the pending writes are done on this object. Then I get to send my read, then I get to do the encoding, then I get to do the write and send it out, right? So there's all this extra sort of introspection it does to not mess up the on-disk state. Um, this may or may not be important. I'm just bringing it up as kind of a, like, that's the only thing I'm worried about here. Other than that, it's not real, it's not real complicated, especially if we don't plan on supporting. Actually, we have to support almost all the operations, I guess. RBD uses most of them. No, well, that's kind of annoying, but it's not that bad. I think. Right, Kifu? It I uses OMAP. It uses OMAP, it uses XAdder, it uses Rightful. Yes. Nothing uses TMAP anymore, but I think that's actually gone. No, no TMAP. TMAP is gone. Oh, great. Okay. Oh, by the way, for for supporting the uh, old old format of uh, RBD, oh, RBD I like V1, it uses TMAP. 
I, I wouldn't bother if I were you. Okay. Like when if 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 we're gonna rewrite the class objects, I would just drop that code. Yes, it starts from the V two support of the Arabic update, and yeah. worry about the V one later. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Okay. Uh, anything? Okay, so so last week, uh, there's a long long uh, standing bug of the messenger test, and uh, I found that. Uh, it's because it is trying to dispatch a message from one call to another to send, and uh, and currently we we don't need to do that, and and I I just disabled that feature, and uh, seems the unit test is is working now, and uh, the second thing is uh, is I I wrote I submit another PR for for C star. Uh, to to support our current requirement for alignment and uh, padding, and the Redux already has an another design here. But uh, this one, I think, it is also worth to looking at because uh, the the similar idea is also implemented in the async messenger that in the with the POSIX uh socket it tends to prefer fetching for the smaller reads and uh, only do the direct read for the larger buffers and uh, i think it's it's reasonable because it assumes that the system cost is much more expensive than than the memory copy so we can we we need to do prefetch if necessary, and uh, and for for native native because it is already good, I think for the DBDK stack, and uh, this implementation also minimizes the user space user to user space copy if if doesn't need because maybe the memory allocated from DBDK is already already meets our requirement. There's a check first. I'm, so afraid, not, not, I'm afraid that's not uh, the case for DPDK. Uh, basically, we are, we, well, calling read exactly for DPDK is rated no way, no, no, uh, no go away. It's uh, because when you are calling the Read exactly. You are saying to sister that you want uh, that you that your output will be one single continuous buffer. And yes. this is this won't be the case of uh, of DPDK. In DPDK, I would expect a scatter gutter list because yes, the uh, network payload is uh, is uh, you have almost you are almost guaranteed the network payload will be uh, will be uh, fragmented. Yes, the the interface of C star uh, data source implementation always return one continuous buffer one at each time from the get interface. So uh, it's 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 internally scattered list, but it's in the get it returns uh, each of the scattered buffer each time from the get interface. Am I correct? Yes, and and uh, well, the get interface is the uh, very low level field is uh, of system that is not supposed to be used by application. Application calls or read exactly if uh, if uh, if it doesn't need to go with scatter gutter, or there is a second uh, way. It's called the consume. Consume uh, allows uh, the application to form uh, a, to retrieve chunk by chunk from C star and without specifying uh, size or location, uh, memory location or so, anything like that. And basing on those chunks, build a scatter gutter list. And finally, I believe we'll, we, for, to support DPDK and SPDK effectively, 
we will want to switch from the read exactly to consume. But I would also would I would want to have an uniform interface that doesn't need to, uh, to make uh, crimson to distinct between to be aware whether it is uh, using the DPDK based stack or the POSIX stack, the kernel stack for uh, networking. It would be nice to have one interface and in the case of DPDK, basically the, the interface will be a uh, scatter getter centric. But in the case of uh, the DPDK, the scatter getter list will likely have many segments. But in case of uh, kernel networking, <laughs> the scatter getter list will be a bit degraded because it will usually it will have only one segment. The segment that will be uh, that will have been returned by uh, by read exactly. Yeah. So uh, what what I've suggested is to use the existing interface. We uh, the, my uh, my patch doesn't change a lot. It only introduces new code. So so it is very easy yes, to but it's not uh, to maintain. The, the but exactly. And, to, yeah, it's but can can be a, what I mean is we can use it as a, a base performance base to check because I think it is the most performant implementation based on the existing interfaces. So I if see. we have more performant interfaces, we can make a comparison to see if it is actually works. Sure, Agreed. I will. I just want to, to point out that the, the, the idea of prefetching for very small chunks still will be in with us even after switching uh, to the consume is because the input uh, the input buffer factory delegates basically allows the application to to allocate and determine the size of your preferred buffer. If you want to go, uh, if you if you are handling small messages, you can you can uh, give T star huge buffer, and it will be prefetching like uh, just like now. But if you are, if you are seeing the application has if application like Crimson OSD has the knowledge about uh, the size of the message, it can Deter, it can specify the size of the big of the buffer to fit exactly. In that yes. way, you are you are avoiding memory copy, the extra memory copying uh, between user space and user space. Mm. But the scatter read is the same to that. Uh, scatter means a lot of uh, discontinued. Uh, buffer chunks we need to read from the uh, like uh, so. wire, right? But uh, but we can still specify each of them to the interface because it is it is has sequence, right? It it, it it's scattered, but it's still one after another. Each have their uh, alignment requirement and the length requirement. So. So we can still. I don't agree that we need to, that in case of uh, of DPDK and scatter gutter list, okay. we need to have to, we need to preserve uh, strong uh, alignment requirements. I believe that alignment is just for yeah. efficient consumption of the buffer by kernel uh, by kernal AIO by kernal the, IO there is, uh, In case of DPDK, we will use DP, SPDK. Yeah, it is only optional. It means. There's a big if there. If we need alignment requirement, we can specify them individually as a sequence to the C star interface. This is the current design of my implementation here. So, so maybe I, I didn't uh, explain it very well, but but. You can please also take a look at the code if you sure. think. I will review. I will, I will review uh, the PR. Sure. 
Yeah, yeah I think thank it's you. A, it's an option, so it's a not an enforced option. For, yeah, it's not. Read back well. Mm -hmm. For now, and we if, could if, go with that. We don't support the PDK at the moment. And uh, another good thing is it, it is already working, so we can continue our work uh, with the current implement, implementation. And uh, and uh, that's all for me. And uh, we, we, we also will get a, a performance uh, back uh, baseline here for the new interfaces. That's okay, sounds good. My point. My question is, uh, shall we just permit or start this discussion with the CDDB guys regarding to the refactory or the the change in regarding to the interface of a read exactly or or cons consume interfaces? Well, uh, finally, ultimately, we will need to do that, but yeah. I would prefer to have uh, uh, some profiling data, some uh, numbers uh, before going to them. I'm working on that right now. Okay, so yeah. okay. I thought that yeah, the interface more, is more important, than, but but probably the yeah the couple. Okay. And uh, another question is that Evie, um, the CTO of uh, CDDB, sent sent me a mail asking if we have an uh, interest to to attend the meeting in in this November. They will have a, a CDDB sub submit. Oh, and they will have a uh, C star submit collocated with the CDDB submit. It will be like one day or, or two days event. So if it, if you guys have interest, please just let me know so I can update him to see if I if we can arrange this for for us to fit our needs. Where will it be? November in in California, CA. California. And in in LA, I guess. I will forward the mail just to ask if you guys are interested. And uh, me. Anything else? Okay, Sam, okay. just a question. Sam, one second. Sam, see them. Never mind. I, I, I will send uh, an email with the question. Ah, just wanted uh, uh, to ask whether I can send uh, uh, send you some questions uh, regarding the PR later on. Just a request for explanations, not just uh, comments. Yeah, go for it. You can just comment on the PR. That's why I made it. It's a fairly convenient way to. I was okay. going to say for the SolidDB thing, that's like a one day trip for me. So if we want someone to just go up. And make an appearance, so I can do that too. Anything else? Okay. Have a good day later. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good night. See you. Thank Have you. a good day. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye.